In this video, we are going to talk about process costing, but how it is done under weighted average method. So guys, today's video is dedicated to CMA USA students doing section D, process costing, weighted average method. So if you have not seen my previous video on process costing first in first out method, I highly recommend that you watch that too. I'm the commerce specialist. Welcome to my YouTube channel where you'll find videos covering learning outcomes of various academic qualifications and professional certifications, including uh, life changing business ideas and concept. So first of all, we need to see the information already given. We're given the opening stock also known as beginning work in progress. There are 300 units, 60% complete to material, 70% complete to conversion cost, CC is conversion cost and the relevant expense is also given. Opening stock 300 units, although incomplete, but this much cost has been incurred so far uh, in terms of material and conversion cost. We're also given units started this period, 1100 units we started this period, uh, incurring a cost of 1600 on material and 12,000 for conversion cost. We are also given data relating to closing stock, ending work in progress, 160 units, which its degree of completion, which is 80% complete to material and 50% uh, complete to conversion cost. Please understand whether it be first in first out method or weighted average method. Our focus is to calculate cost per unit. Our focus is to calculate the cost allocated to finished goods or in other words, we are trying to find the value of finished goods which we have completed in terms of dollars. We need to do the valuation for ending work in progress. So the very first step, although in most of the questions in MCQs or essay questions, uh, you are not asked to do it. You are not required to do it. But it is advisable if you do this, life become very easy for you. So we always start off with quantity schedule or you can call it physical flow of goods. How we begin? We begin with beginning work in progress. Quantity schedule is all about units, okay? No dollars, nothing, all units. Opening work in progress, beginning work in progress, we already have 300 units. Then always add unit started. Unit started, another name for unit started could be input. This, these are the units we started afresh this month or this year. So when you add this, this is the first step. You get 1400 units and you can call it units to account for. Which means if I am the production manager for this department, for this process, I am questioned, I am responsible. What if my superior asked me, uh, I was working on 1400 units, what is the status? What happened? Are all the units completed? So listen to my response. Out of these 1400 units, obviously some units are completed. I can write here units completed. And ending work in progress. Now in exams, most of the time, one of these information is given to you. Sometimes both the information is given. But at least one information will be given. So out of 1400 units, how many units are still in process at the end? 160. So from 1400, when I minus the work in process at end of the year, 160, I get 1240. These are the units completed. Okay, so units completed, I got 1240. How? 1400 minus this. I get this. So that's how I account for. My boss asked me what happened to 1400 units. My response is out of 1400 units, 1240 units are completed and 160 units are still in process at year end. This is not most of the time required, but advisable. Please note. Second step, under first in first out, we calculate units started and completed, but this is weighted average method. We do not need to calculate units started and completed. This step is not required. Actually, it is calculated Units completed minus beginning work in progress. But under weighted average method, this method, this step is not required at all. We don't calculate units started and completed when we are doing weighted average method. I have written here just for you to understand that if you are asked for units started and completed, it's always 1240 units completed minus beginning work in progress. But we don't do this step in weighted average method. So the next step here 
is to calculate equivalent production in units. Equivalent production in units in weighted average method is calculated in a different way if you compare it with first in first out method. So under weighted average method what we do, we straight away start off with units completed. Units completed. Which is given here 1240 units. And then add ending work in progress. We need to look at the number of units, 160 units. So I'm going to take 160 units and multiply it by the existing stage of completion, which is 80%. So when I multiply 160 units by 80%, which is the existing percentage, I get 128 units. Reverse slash, what is the stage of completion for uh, conversion cost? 50%. So same 160 units multiply by 50%. So I'll get 80 units, equivalent units for conversion cost. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen, your EUP is done. It's just a two step working for EUP. In first and first out, we have three steps working. Here units completed directly from here. Take ending work in progress, multiply by the existing stage of completion. So you got here, 1,368 and here 1,240 plus 80, you get 1,320 equivalent units. So guys, once you have calculated equivalent production in units, the next step is to calculate cost per unit. Now in cost per unit, you got to pay attention here. This is weighted average method, not first in first out. In weighted average method, it's done a little different way. What we have to look at is we have material cost, isn't it? We have material cost. So for material cost, you have to consider how much was material in the beginning work in progress, which is $500, plus the material cost of the current production, which is $1,600. So you've got to add these two. You get $2,100. Now this is the total material cost, including the uh, material cost in the opening work in progress plus the current cost. Now you divide it by the material equivalent, which is 1,368. So you divide it by 1,368 equivalent units. So 2,100 divided by 1,368 gives you 1.53508 per unit. That's the material equivalent cost per unit. Then we're talking about conversion cost. Again, Take the conversion cost in the beginning work in progress, which is $1,000 and the conversion cost for current production, which is $12,000. If you add them, you get $13,000 divided by the conversion cost equivalent, which you have calculated here, 1,320 units, 9,884 cost per unit and when you add both these you will get cost per unit material labor and overhead conversion means labor and overhead so your cost per unit comes to you add this plus 1.53508 it's coming to 11.300 11.383356. Now, once you've calculated cost per unit, we need to allocate cost to finished goods and to work in progress. So if I uh, look at the finished goods, it's very simple and clear. Uh, units completed, if you could see, these are the units completed. So what I can do is I can straight away take units completed here. Or you can also call it alternatively finished goods. How many units are there? 1,240 units. And you multiply it by the cost per unit, which is 11.38356. So you get the cost of completed units, 1240 into 11.38356, which is coming to 14,115.6. Simple, the number of units which you have completed here, you can take it from quantity schedule here. 
multiply by cost per unit so this is the cost of finished goods the only thing we are left with is the value of work in progress ending the EWIP so valuation of EWIP have to look at the units here guys this is important we take these units okay so if you're talking about EWIP material wise there are 128 equivalent units and conversion cost is uh, 80 equivalent units material equivalent units you have to multiply by material cost per unit which we calculated here is dollar 1.53508 and these 80 equivalent units for conversion multiply by the conversion cost here which is dollar 9.84848 okay so when we multiply how much do you get 128 into 1.53058 which is 195.914 and then 80 into 9.84848 which is 787.87 when you add these two 195.914 it comes to let's say 983.7 this is the value of your ending work in progress value of EWIP now how to check the question it's very simple what you can do is just add these two amounts so let's see your finished goods are valued at 14,105.6 and your ending work in progress is valued at 983.7 so if I add this it gives me 15,100 to be more precise it was 99 I rounded it off so this is the total value 15,100 if you add these two if you add these two you will also get 15,100 that's what tells us that the workings are accurate and complete. So guys, those who've been requesting for additional help, the link is appearing on the screen. Join my closed group. You'll get all the details for the host of benefits and rewards which are waiting for you. Regarding this video, if you have any queries, leave a comment in the comment section. I will respond to you as usual. If you like this video, please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit. Thank you so very much for your precious time.